What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again. Great to see you. After a long time I'm making a video. I had put all the videos in schedule for upload and finally I'm back with making videos again. All right. So, today we shall discuss on a very requested topic. It is on how to deal with planets that are placed in dusthanas, the 6th, 8th and the 12th houses the so called villains the so called difficult houses the so called bad houses all right we will see what to do can we do something at all or we can't do anything all right or is there something else which these planets are trying to tell us which nobody talks at least in youtube <laughs> All right if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want me to make any other video then let me know in the comments okay and if you want a consultation then please approach me in my website below with your license all right and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you deal with these planets in the dusthanas okay so it's chilling cold here in europe my god it's snow okay so what are the dusthanas basically we have three dusthanas some say there are four okay let's keep the fourth one aside for now the sixth house the eighth house and the twelfth house the sixth house is the house of diseases it's the house of divorce separation from spouse it is the house of quarrels it is the house of enemies it is the house which makes us feel that life is a burden it is the house where we do our daily activities that's why people say that sometimes daily activities life itself feels like a burden yes and it's the house of discomfort and it's the house of displeasure it is the house where your expectations are not met because it is also the house of expectation yes actually it's the house of frustration and there's this law the more you expect the more you frust uh, frustrate yourself should i repeat the amount of frustration is directly proportional to the amount of expectation you have yes and then we have the most glorious eighth house the house of death scandals sexuality pornography prostitution addictions alcohol all the garbage of the world yes all these things perversity attachment all these things come under the 8th house 8th house rules all of these things yes then we have the 12th house 12th house is the house of loss it's the house of hospitalization it is the house where we go and sleep it is the house where we don't feel like doing anything it is the house where we finally go and resort to it is the house where everything ends because that's the last house yes 12th house so now the predicament is only if you are seeing these houses from the lagna which means the 6th 8th and the 12th houses are only troublesome if you sit in the lagna because from the lagna they are placed in a so called negative angle right but let us see something how these planets become very beautiful oh my god dusthanas and beauty <laughs> perhaps or probably that's the last thing somebody will say right no i am going to tell you how they become very beautiful treat the ninth house as the lagna should i repeat treat the ninth house as the first house let me give you an example suppose you are a libra ascendant all right and for libra venus is the lagna lord as we all know ruler of the first house ascendant number 7 is libra right now suppose venus here is placed in the 12th house suppose in the sign of virgo then it is in the 12th house so that means some aspects related to venus will be challenged also it is debilitated here that's another problem but as of now let's ignore the sign virgo and venus is debilitation but let's just take the case of the 12th house itself or if venus is in taurus in the 8th house or if venus is exalted in pisces in the 6th house okay or let's take any other planet suppose saturn being the yog karaka is placed in the 6th house in pisces so then from libra these are difficult placements okay but if you take the 9th house 
as the lagna which means if you study these two planets venus in the 12th house in virgo and saturn in the 6th house in pisces for a libra ascendant by making gemini the ascendant all right you twist it you make the number 3 in the first house you make that the ascendant and then what happens you see that the venus that so called venus who had gone to a so called terrible house the 12th house and that so called saturn who went to a difficult house the 12th house oh sorry the 6th house and venus was in 12th house now when you make gemini as the lagna these two planets go in kendra which means the 9th house 3rd house 12th house and the 6th house are kendras to each other Yes, so I have made a video on planets in Kendra to each other. So you can watch that if you want to know more on how to study planets in Kendra to each other, not in one four seven ten. That means whenever you have planets in six or twelve, from the lagna it's badly placed, but from the ninth house it is very well placed. Now see. what is sixth house sixth house as they say is the house of celibacy where we try to preserve the semen yes and then we utilize that energy which flows from the muladhar to the sahasra chakra to the top and by that the yogis attain spiritual perfection the scriptures say that at a particular time when the constellations and the planets and the movements are auspicious the yogi decides to leave his body he is or her maybe <laughs> and then the yogi attains perfection so that means 10th house which is the house of karma so if you take the karma of spirituality yes 10th from the 9th it goes to the 6th house that means any planet in the 6th house is an indication of some unfulfilled karma related to your spiritual pursuits should i re repeat any planet in the 6th house is an indication of some unfulfilled karma towards your guru or towards spirituality because you have not done that that is why from the lagna in this life that how planet is placed uh, in a house of frustration because see i will explain you the logic when you practice spirituality then you understand that nothing belongs to you everything belongs to god you are not the controller you are not the enjoyer you are not the proprietor that's what gita says three things enjoyer controller proprietor you are not this okay neither am i <laughs> god is the ultimate proprietor as lord krishna says in the gita nand suri da sarva bhutanam i am also the well wishing friend of every living entity here that means when we do not understand this then we try to lord over things oh he is my boyfriend she is my girlfriend he is my husband she is my wife she is mine he is mine embrass <laughs> have you seen how people try to hold on catch on to people like oh <laughs> i'll not let this person go now even if death comes i'll also die with this person yes have you seen that so that means you are to that extent away from the realizations of the scriptures the ninth house that is why that planet is giving you frustration now i am not talking of venus in sixth house here i am talking of any planet in general in the sixth house yes that means that when you realize the conclusion of the scriptures that god is the ultimate proprietor god is the ultimate enjoyer god is the ultimate well wishing friend of everybody then we don't try to lord over things of this material world then what happens we are naturally not frustrated because our expectations are very less or minimal but suppose we think that oh that person belongs to me yes that person is so amazing mera sath hona chahiye he or she should be with me right <laughs> all the problems in this world are because of only one reason we think that person is meant for our happiness or our enjoyment should i repeat the only cause of problems in this world is we think that the other person is meant for me to enjoy yes that is the cause of all trouble in this world because if you give up that enjoying mentality everything is finished yes when a man sees a beautiful woman why does he get attracted 
because she's beautiful no that's not the reason he gets attracted because he thinks this girl is meant for me this girl should be enjoying with me that is why uh, he gets attracted the same is with the woman when she sees a very handsome man she feels that oh i wish only if this uh, i could have enjoyed with this person yes then the fr- the problem starts because then you undergo frustration you see then you undergo turmoil inside because then 10 other people will also be looking to that person yes then there's competition my god recently one of my uh, friend uh, he had told me that he had proposed to a girl no? i love you i want to marry you <laughs> and then what happened this girl said to him that oh actually na three other men have proposed me you are the fourth one basically she said you are the fourth option so now uh, i will need some time to decide whom to marry <laughs> then i said to this uh, to my friend that my dear sir whenever somebody treats you like an option delete their contact directly that's what i do and that's why i am happy <laughs> but this person cannot do that because he is so much helplessly attached to that girl and he is begging her non stop oh please accept my proposal now please 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 i will die i can't live without you please <laughs> I will give you the happiness of the entire universe. I'll do whatever it takes for you. Whatever it takes for me to keep you happy. I will do anything, everything. Please, 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 please accept my proposal. <laughs> Then I was thinking, I wish he would have begged so much in front of the supreme lord, God. My god, where he would have been today. <laughs> but no this foolish fellow he is going and begging in front of a woman and at the end what will happen i know because i know his horoscope i know he is not going to get married for the next 5 years and this girl is going to get married now so indirectly i know that she is not going to ex- accept his proposal she is going to thrash this person completely and after all what she can do she cannot marry four she has to marry one person right then what then you see so even if she wants to not displease this person she can't do it and even if she accepts his proposal the other three will cry there you go <laughs> so either he is miserable or the other three one except one all three will be crying yes so now you see what happens so this person has a expectation that oh this girl should be for me that is why he is getting frustration all right so that means to the degree we have this tendency of exploiting or enjoying or holding or hoarding or trying to pull things to that degree the sixth house will torment us should i repeat no no it's enough i guess <laughs> this video has become very dramatic my god maybe this is the first dramatic video which i made <laughs> all right so in the other videos we will discuss about how to deal with planets in the 12th house although i wanted to do it in this video only but this has become very long and some people have told me that make short videos so paying heed to their advice i will not extend this for more than 15 minutes all that right. okay so the next video will be on dealing with planets in the 12th house so from the 6th house that's what we need to understand that the planet in the 6th house will only trouble us if we are not letting go of expectations regarding that house or regarding that planet otherwise that planet will not trouble us yes that is why i have seen saturn in the 6th house these people are too much obsessed too much obsessed about working in a certain way in a particular direction which is not bad but they have this mentality that oh i want this to happen like this because saturn is karma adhipati right so you are attached to your karma when venus is there in the 6th house then i have seen time and again venus in the 6th house too much expectations from partners my god it's like the partner feels like i'm dying now there was this one girl oh my god <laughs> some other time not another story no a beautiful story some other day i will tell all right so the next two videos i will be making uh, will be on planets in the 8th house and in the 12th house on how to 
uh, utilize them properly okay so that's what i wanted to say regarding the sixth house any planet if it is there then reduce the expectations regarding that planet by reading the scriptures by practicing spiritual path and by realizing that god is the ultimate controller enjoyer and proprietor of everything that exists okay then that planet will not trouble us because we will not expect much from that planet all right otherwise sixth house is a royal road to frustration until next time remember god is there with you all the time just look to him <laughs> he will be there okay so if you are new to the channel please subscribe to it somewhere here there and if you want a consultation then approach me in my website and yes one last thing i wanted to say uh, some of you message me in whatsapp and then i don't get time to reply because so many people are messaging me but then recently one person he said that oh if you don't reply and why did you uh, give your phone number in whatsapp well i can't reply to everybody <laughs> so please understand that i am not like goddess durga i have 10 hands okay at least i have to i don't know if you have 10 hands <laughs> okay good night bye bye see you